This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a UFC pay-per-view match coming up this weekend, headlined by Sean O'Malley taking on Marlon Chito Vera. And who better to break down that card than Austin Swain? We're going to have Austin on today giving his thoughts on that headline matchup, giving his thoughts on top money lines in this slate, props he's targeting at FanDuel Sportsbook, and much more. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel research joined here as mentioned by austin swain find him on twitter at a swain three check out his work at fanduel research and also on the heat check where he's going to give a ufc breakdown both of a betting and dfs perspective later on today austin it is a pleasure to have you on the show how you doing i am doing amazing because usually when you and i are talking that means there are pretty big fights going on and just kind of the way ufc is changing their business model UFC 299 and then UFC 300, a big milestone next month. These cards are absolutely loaded to the gills with fights that could arguably be made events of the Apex cards, the littler ones. So, I mean, this, this is an absurd fight card. I can't wait to dive in and break it down with you. Now, I know you're watching like the smaller cards, but do you do anything like fun or special for like the bigger cards? Is there like a go to snack you make for those? You know, how do you live it up in the Swaim household for a pay-per-view? Yeah, you're going to you're going to make me shed a tear here because what with the old pay-per-view process is early on when I was dating, I figured out that my girlfriend who I've been with for four and a half years now, her dad is a huge UFC fan. Okay. We just happen to so have that in common, right? I'd always head over there. They would go all out with the Domino's deal, six ninety nine. If you love Domino's, they would grab, you know, pizzas, anything that you possibly name of, mix a salad, whatever it was in there. That was the staple. Now, they have since moved eight hours away, so we, we don't get to reconnect on as many pay-per-views, but occasionally we'll still bust out the Domino's, just Emily and I live in here. Um, but in, in general, I like to watch the fights by myself, and if I can, on silent, avoid the commentary. It's just like an odd way that I like to process UFC fights, no matter how big the card is. So um, that's my own neurotic shortcomings that are causing that. I respect that. I've been there too. Uh, I am embarrassed about the way I behave sometimes while watching sports. So it's more so about that. Um, I can be on good behavior for the Super Bowl because, you know, it's like, okay, the social I pre- prepare myself, like chill out, dude, like just chill out for a second. Um, mm-hmm. But like for, for other stuff, I get it for sure. So understandable. I like look at my heart rate during like Daytona races and like it's higher than Denny Hamlin's during the race. So I fully understand know where you're coming from. And I hope that you would get, get some dominoes, even just for yourself or for you and Emily this weekend uh, to celebrate, which should be a pretty fun card. We're going to break down that card, uh, get Austin thoughts on O'Malley versus Vera and the rest of the card here in just one second. But first I mentioned that Austin has a podcast, the heat check over on the FanDuel research podcast feed. There's actually a free play for DFS going on, on that podcast this week. If you want to link to the free play, you got to listen to Austin over on that show there to incentivize you to check out a revamp podcast. Austin's been doing it this way since January. We're doing both betting and DFS in the exact same show and the reception has been great. So uh, go check out Austin's show this week. Uh, Search for FanDuel Research Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to the UFC show later on today and get the link to the free play there. So check out Austin's show uh, to get yourself entered for that free play. And uh, get yourself hopefully some cash uh, for your FanDuel DFS account as well. This podcast is covering the spread. You can find us right here on the FanDuel uh, FanDuel uh, Podcast Network. Search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Broke down EPL Match Week 28 with Austin Cass yesterday. I also talked NASCAR and Phoenix. Both uh, that show posted on the Covering the Spread podcast feed along with FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit are required bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt 
See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Austin, we're going to dig into this this card here in just one second. Let's start things off here by talking about things on a broader perspective, because at least in the NFL, we can sometimes see inefficient lines during the playoffs, high profile events, because there's a lot more casual money in the market than what you'd see for a typical card. So I want to ask you what your experience has been when you're trying to find a value from a betting perspective for pay-per-view events relative to what it is for a typical Saturday card. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I echo your sentiment about the NFL with what I see with UFC pay-per-views where lines tend to move more throughout the week than they do at the Apex cards. They typically move in what you'd consider to be the public direction, and part of that is the fighters that UFC exclusively leaves for these cards. Guys like Sean O'Malley, who we'll talk about today, Ian Gary, Israel Adesanya. You know, I've said for years, if you want to value bet UFC, a lot of times those guys don't end up making your betting card because they're just, you know, they get steamed up. They look like Superman. In some cases they are undefeated and I get it. It's not always the wrong move to bet against or the right move to bet against them. Right. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, that's the be behavior you're going to expect. That's what we're going to get from public betters, casual betters, as you said, you know, the biggest thing for me on pay-per-views though, why I love them and why my track record, I think is a little bit better than the apex ones is because I get experienced fighters, which means I get data. And that's something that I really love. I got sure. to model 11 of the 14 fights this week. Just last week at the Apex, that split was 3 of 12. So I get a lot more data. I get a lot more practicality to apply some of the things that I've learned, some of the ratios that I've discovered from, from doing this with FanDuel for a few years. And I, it get, to me, it gives me an advantage. And it only helps that sometimes you do see some of that inflation go the other way. But that's much more so how it impacts me specifically. So sometimes when we feel more confident about bets, we can sometimes have different allocations towards mm -hmm. those bets. Do you find yourself having more action on these cards? I know that's kind of like a two-headed thing because it mm -hmm. could be like, okay, I'm watching more. So I want as an entertainment factor to have yeah. a bit more out there. But do you feel yourself kind of having a different bet allocation when it comes to pay-per-views as a result of what you just discussed? I think so. I think my betting volume is slightly higher. Like I'm remembering back last month, I think, um, I, I was about three or four units higher than I would be at a typical Apex card. Just there typically are more fights on these cards as well. Sure. So I'm trying that to balance sense. that volume with, with how much I spring into. Really, it's about my personal confidence in fights. I think actually my largest betting volume card this year was at the Apex. It's just I had specific fights that I felt strongly about. You know, from this one, I'd say my confidence is pretty average. There are a few couple spots you'll dig into that I like, but there are also some spots where I kind of have ended up throwing up my hands up, and we'll discuss all of those and later on the heat check uh, when I'm going through the entire DFS pool where you do kind of have to make a stand in daily fantasy, sure. but some of these I'm not super confident in. Um, others, though, I'm excited to discuss with you. Well, luckily, the main event is one where we know what to expect. We know these guys very well. So let's talk about that one. It is Sean O'Malley taking on Cheeto Vera. And there's been some movement uh, towards Vera recently because O'Malley was minus 280 last night. He is now minus 265. So what's your top down view of this fight and any value for you at FanDuel for this one? Yeah. Um, first of all, this is a rematch of a fight that took place in 2020. It was actually an Austin's fight of the night that night that <laughs> ended up disappointing a bit. Sean O'Malley got hurt. His leg buckled under him early in the first round and uh, Shido Vera ended up getting a TKO victory due to the injury leading to ground to pound. So that's how he's getting this shot now that Sean O'Malley is a champion. And when I look at how my model forecasts Sean O'Malley, you and I were sitting here on this show against Aljamain Sterling. And I said, I, I, Sean O'Malley's a plus 220 underdog. My model's favoring him. That is so far off the market. Here's why I think that is and why I'm not really trusting that read. 
I should have. He knocked out Aljamain Sterling early in the second round, looked in control of the striking and scoring exchanges there. Um, and Sean O'Malley's 29. Like, all the enigmatic personality stuff aside, this guy has become an incredibly well-rounded mixed martial arts guy, working with my favorite gym at MMA Lab. I am glad my model looks favorably upon him, and it doesn't necessarily even think he's a bad value to win this fight just as a straight pick. 60.2% of the time, I've got O'Malley winning this fight. Now, that would lead to betting value on Cheeto Vera because the implied odds not quite lining up with this minus 265 prop. But I do have a spot where I am higher than the market. It is Sean O'Malley by knockout. I've got it 41.1%. This guy has a massive knockdown rate, 1.05%. And the biggest thing about Cheeto Vera here, he's durable. He's never been knocked out in the UFC level. But what I tend to look at is striking defense metrics to see, okay, a guy has not been wobbled or hurt yet. But is he defending punches appropriately? Vera at 51%, that's not very high. So I'm a little concerned for him against a power punch or a sniper like O'Malley. Um, I really show value on that. I, I believe the implied odds around 41%, Jim, are somewhere around like plus 140, I want to say, in that vicinity, something around there. Plus, I, 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 I didn't have the math in front of me, but um, I'm much higher than plus 250, which is the market you're getting here. I think you get a little bit of a steal because Vera has never suffered that outcome in UFC. But O'Malley is different. He's got hands and he's much larger than the last time these guys fought. And he was 25 years old and much skinnier. So um, I really like Sean O'Malley by knockout. I like this fight to not go the distance. I've got that 65.0% of the time. Um, and this fight actually is favored to go the distance slightly. That's following ba bantamweight historical trends. I do understand that, but these guys are finishers. We saw their first fight end in like four minutes, and that pace was pretty frantic um, that I was watching closely in my fight of the night. So I really love a a kind of a, a violence bet, does not go the distance, and O'Malley's power could be the big difference. So right now, the odds of O'Malley winning by knockout or TKO are plus 250, as you alluded to at FanDuel Sportsbook. Implied odds there are 29%. You said you've got it closer to 40%. So yeah. good amount of value there. Going back to the uh, will the fight go the distance market, right now, yes is minus 118, mm -hmm. and no is minus 106. If you're picking between those two bets, the O'Malley by knockout or uh, will the fight go, di go the distance with no being minus 106, preference for you between those two absolutely i'm going fight not goes the distance because i'm also showing value on cheeto vera inside the distance because sure. of the win equity discrepancy and the biggest thing that you got to remember about o'malley he's never been five rounds and that three to five round difference in ufc can be absolutely pivotal when this fight is simply a binary yes or no goes the distance question if O'Malley doesn't have the cardio and conditioning to go into that fourth, fifth round, Vera ends up surprising from behind. I feel much stronger about this fight not going the distance with all the ambiguity there than I do specifically with O'Malley by knockout. But um, I, I really like both bets. Obviously, I tend to wager smaller amounts on longer shots like plus 250 wagers As to win. Should. Yeah. One unit. Yeah. Um, I, I feel better about the fight to go the distance and not going the distance minus 106. If if I had to guess is why the market looks this way, it's because of Vera's recent decision trends against guys who are not nearly as powerful as Sean O'Malley. OK, so Austin is in on O'Malley versus Vera to not go the distance minus 106 and checking out Sean O'Malley by knockout or TKO plus 250 at FanDuel Sportsbook. But as you mentioned, Austin, it's a loaded card. It's not just this this uh, matchup that we have here. A lot of other fun fights here. Let's talk about some money lines first. Where else have seen value as far as money lines go on this slate? Sure, yeah, and I'm going to talk about a guy that, weirdly enough, we don't get together and do this every week, but we've talked about him now four times. Piotr Jan, I've even taught you how to say his name, right, yep. because it's a little different than it looks, said Peter. I love him here at minus 124, even though my model's not quite there and in when I think conceptually about the value in this fight, Piotr Jan, his last three fights, loses a split decision to Sean O'Malley, most said he probably deserved. Loses a split decision to Aljamain Sterling, most probably said he deserved. And then in his last fight, he takes on Marab Devalishvili. And I, I was pretty high on him in that fight. What I watched was something that defied what I believed was possible before. Marab Devalish really doubled the takedown attempt record in this division, attempted 49 of them. Piotr Jan never had an opportunity to mount any offense to win this fight. You That's said 49, why correct? Did I hear yeah. that right? Yeah. <laughs> Usually guys get tired after about 20 and Marab Devalish really is the energizer bunny. It's why I think a lot <laughs> of people think he'll be the champion in this division by the end of the year. I still think Piotr Jan is a really, really great fighter in his prime at 31. He does everything well on paper and he's taking on Song Yudong here. 
26 year old um, from China, trains out with Team Alpha Male. We just saw him in a main event about, I want to say, a couple months ago against Chris Gutierrez further down the rankings. He lost the distance striking differential there. Now here's a master of sport in boxing and Piotr Jan. Excellent 53% striking accuracy. Excellent 59% striking defense. The biggest thing that bailed Yudong out in those fights uh, previously was his ability to get to his wrestling. Well, Jan has an 85% takedown defense with the biggest sample I've ever studied, thanks to Marab. So um, I, I love Piotr Jan to win this fight. My model has him at minus 115 uh, as far as implied odds. But I would be comfortable taking this up to one, minus 135 myself. I did bet it at minus 115 earlier this week. And this is a number, I will say, in some of the close fights in this one, I love FanDuel, but maybe shop around because they are, they are all over the place across a lot of books. I don't know what the reason for that is. You might be able to find a better number somewhere because this fight is just all over the board, depending on where you set up shop. But I do like the other yawn to win. Um, and I think this fight should be way different than a pick em. It's just recent results where my model is even giving a lot of knockout equity to Yadong. Piotr Jan never wobbled. Elite striking defense. He's in his office there in the boxing environment. Um, this is going to be Austin's fight of the night, and I do like Jan to pervert, uh, emerge kind of in a decision-oriented outcome here. Why do you think there is such a discrepancy across books in the way the money line for this fight sets up? Um, it, you know, I've just kind of, from studying some specific money splits, I think there, there are certain customers, there are certain books that have been willing to take on more action on this fight as the week has progressed. FanDuel has kind of followed this action toward Jan. When I actually pulled this line on Sunday, Jan was minus 146, so it's kind of moved against me. It actually hit a pick -em on Tuesday, and now Jan is back to minus 124. There's another fight on the prelims, Giles and Almeida, Curtis Blades. It's changed favorites about three or four times on FanDuel throughout the week. So um, I don't particularly know why these particular fights are moving this way. Usually I kind of see fights moving with either against the public or with particular data. Both Yan and Yadong are pretty accomplished guys, but I don't really un understand the Yadong angle here too much. And it makes me wonder, am I stepping in it? But um, this line movement has been fascinating and I don't really understand um, some of the movement behind it. Okay, so as always, shop around. Just kind of good betting principles there. Uh, Jan, minus 124 right now, FanDuel Sportsbook in Austin is on board with that one. Any other money lines you like on this card? Um, so we'll move over to the prelims here. This is actually a fight that was scheduled for October. There was a fight day illness uh, that took it away, but I'm glad to have it back here in Miami. Iwan Cute Laba taking on Felipe Linz. Is, I think it's like the fifth fight up on the card here. Cute Laba coming back at minus 134 here. To me, I'm getting a discount because of Qtalaba's own tendency to make mistakes in dangerous matchups. He's been finished in five of his last eight fights, which you're saying, oh my God, I don't really want to lay minus 134 with that guy. But 38-year-old Felipe Linz is a pretty benign matchup, all things considered. Just a 0.57% knockdown rate. He's only got one at light heavyweight, and it was against a guy who was 40 years old. So Qt Laba's durability, I think, will be of, be of service here. Linz has also never attempted a UFC submission. Qt Laba has been submitted five times with UFC. So the lack of danger here could allow Qt Laba's athleticism, and more importantly, according to my model, his activity to win out here. Um, QT Laba attempts nearly 12 significant strikes per minute, 4.75 takedowns per 15 with 58% accuracy. And anecdotally as a fight fan, when I've watched Felipe Linz in this light heavyweight tenure, he's in improved shape from his time in heavyweight. And that's, that's worth commending. That's an adjustment that I wanted to adjust. But then I look at how he's fought. He's kind of been pushing against the cage, not very efficient with his own takedowns, 35%. The thing is, Qt Laba will have the athleticism advantages here that I believe takes that sort of element away. Um, this fight actually under one and a half rounds is significantly favored here. So they're expecting sort of a violent outcome on FanDuel. Um, I'm a little different than that. I've got a decision, a slight favorite, just because these guys, no submission danger on the record whatsoever. Knockdown rate's not as high as you'd think. So I actually think this fight will go a little bit longer. To me, though, that does favor QT Laba, given his tendency to make mistakes. I've got him at minus 150 with a 60.2% implied chance to win. So I think you're getting good value on this line. Yeah, QT Laba's money line right now, minus 134. If you want to bet that over one and a half rounds, that is plus 112 mm -hmm. right now at FanDuel Sportsbook as well. So that's a prop we could consider for this yep. card. Any other props stand out to you when you look at the current markets at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll go back up onto the main card and look at a, another guy that you and I have talked about before, Gilbert Durino Burns. He's taken on Jack Della Maddalena, kind of a title eliminator between guys on the fringe of the top five here at welterweight. 
Jack Della Maddalena undefeated. He's looked awesome with UFC thus far. I'm a little surprised this line has steamed so much toward him. He was minus 125 on Sunday, minus 170 here. I'm actually looking at the total in this fight of will it go the distance? Yes, is plus 150. And I just don't really understand that perspective when not only you'll get the recent results um, of Burns, but also Jack Della Maddalena. Burns has gone the distance in four of his last five fights. Jack Della Maddalena has gone the distance in his last two, theoretically moving up in competition here. So it's harder to finish, guys, harder to get those explosive moments. And when I look at these ingredients, just like I look at it, QT Laba and Lins, it's not like they've been unlucky to go the distance. Gilbert Burns, just 0.5 attempt, submission attempts per 15 minutes. I think of him as a good submission guy. He hasn't really shown that on paper, like that willingness and aggressiveness. The one concern here for me would be Jack Della Maddalena's power. It is pretty substantial, 1.24% knockdown rate. But FanDuel's got that as the most likely outcome of this fight. Della, Jack Della Maddalena by knockout. I saw it last at plus 160. Other than that, I don't really see any sort of path to a finish, and I trust Burns' veteran savviness. I trust his modest durability to this point. He's only been knocked out once, and that was by Kamaru Usman. So I love this fight to go the distance. Um, my model actually prefers Gilbert Burns by decision to what Madalena's number's coming back at because it's a little higher than... I've got JDM at minus 145 here, so I'm just going to play the fight to go the distance, and I... It, my brain thinks Jack Della Maddalena wins it. My model thinks Gilbert Burns might, but um, I think I'll just cut the middle of the road and take this fight to go all 15. It also allows you to just kind of enjoy the match as opposed yep. to rooting for how it ends. Uh, rooting for the match to continue, gets Austin more time watching that match too, so it's a benefit there as well. So Austin is taking Burns versus Della Maddalena to go the distance. That is plus 150 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other props stand out to you across Saturday, Austin? Yeah, I, I couldn't not talk about this fight before you and I got, went through the uh, on the prelims. So this is another type of fight where I said this would absolutely be like a co-main event type of fight at the Apex. Uh, Mihal Oleg Shechuk taking on Michelle Pereira. So I'm setting myself up to fail with the first names being nearly identical <laughs> here. Um, but the thing that I can't ignore in this fight, you, uh, not only does my brain match my model here, when I look at the difference between Pereira and Oleg Shechuk entering this matchup, it is phenomenal matchmaking. Pereira used to fight at welterweight, 170 pounds. Most of his UFC career was there. Then he took his middleweight debut, debut in his last fight, got a 66-second knockout. That was an impressive result. It also came against a significantly below-average striker by just about any metric. So now he faces Oleg Shechuk, a guy who's more had more grappling issues, just a 48% takedown defense. That goes away against Pereira's historical tendencies here. And the thing to keep in mind about Oleg Shechuk he had a four and four UFC record at light heavyweight. So these guys were successful UFC fighters, 35 part, pounds apart in weight class. Oleg Shechuk is the significantly bigger guy. And the thing that I look toward with him, significantly more power, 1.72% knockdown rate. That is encroaching that elite rate that you saw with Francis Ngannou in his time with UFC, Davis and Figueredo in lower weight classes. He's got massive power. So I love him by knockout here at plus 216. It's something that you don't see very often. The underdog on the money line here has the most likely individual method of victory. That's in line with my model. So I feel great about it. I've got Ole Shechuk at plus 195, 34.0%. Um, and it's coming back at plus 260. So I think a lot of people will look at that outcome and say, boy, I don't know if I want to spend such a short number on a money line underdog. But I think it's because it's such a specific win path for him and his hammers for Polish hands here. I love Oleg Shechuk in this spot. I uh, I did bet the money line because I hadn't had access to props. I got that at plus 135. But if you haven't bet this fight yet, I would just take the knockout because I don't really think Oleg Shechuk has much decision equity. If The longer it's going, the more success Pereira probably has had with his wrestling. He is the larger guy, which could lead to fatigue. I would take the knockout prop here um, in, in an outcome that I feel extremely strongly about. Oleg Shechuk on the money line, a plus 126 right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, but to win by knockout, plus 260. I do find that in, that dynamic interesting, though, where you're talking about a fighter is not positioned well to win if it comes to a decision. So I think that that dynamic is, is super interesting when you're trying to bet mm -hmm. these props. Yeah, I really think the reason for that is because of the ambiguity around Pereira here at middleweight, sure. because he had an outcome that was so, it was actually favored for him to win by first round knockout in his last fight. That's how likely it was going to be. We didn't get the sample of what we wanted to see. And sure. like Pereira has not been knocked out. I think that's part of the reason why this line's inefficient. He has a pretty good striking defense on paper, 58%, but he's entering a whole new world where you have to remember in UFC weight classes, 
these two weight classes he's changing between are 15 pounds apart. The fighters within them on fight night are about 30 to 40 pounds apart when they add back in water, do the weight cutting procedures. That is a huge size difference. And, and Pereira, I, he, I like him in general, but the, the power is definitely concerning for me, for him in this matchup for me. Okay, so Alex Shaychuk by knockout plus two sixty at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is where Austin is going for that one. That's all we got here for today on this preview of USC two ninety nine. But as mentioned, make sure you check out Austin's heat check preview to get some uh, some more thoughts on the betting angles for this event, but also some DFS thoughts and a reminder: the URL for that UFC DFS free play will be in that show. So check out Austin's show. We'll put that uh, towards the top of the show if you want to get entered in the free play over at FanDuel Research. Check that out. Search for FanDuel Research Podcast and check out the Heat Check with Austin later on today. Austin, a pleasure to have you on. As always, enjoy the card. Enjoy the dominoes, I hope, and we'll talk to you again soon. That sounds good, Jim. I'll see you soon, buddy. Alrighty, find Austin on Twitter at aswain 3 I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonis and check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research next week. A lot of college basketball coming up on the show. Dr. Ed Fang is with us on Monday. NFL Free Agency is next week, too. So going to be a blast. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 